Hi everyone, I'm Jack the Rambling Rack and I hope that you're doing well. This is going to be a Tag Tuesday book tag. It's going to be the Reading Pet Peeves tag. Now, I don't have any pets right now. I don't know that I'm generally regarded as a peevish complainer here on BookTube. But let's dive into these prompts. It was originally created by Alan over at Big Card Books and Classics, and I was kindly tagged by Tom at LA Books. I'll link both their videos in the description box below. But let's dive in. Let's uh, pet these prompts produced by Peevish Alan. Prompt one, do you use or read along with audiobooks? No. Uh, I honestly... Couldn't tell you the last time I listened to an audiobook, nor what that audiobook would be. Um, I've never really been a fan of them. Uh, the, the big reason for me as a reader is that if I'm reading a text and I want to make a connection to it, I enjoy the ability to be able to read reread a passage or to flip back and, and read a passage and then come forward, you know, in the book and, and make connections around that or flip to the end for a, for a foot uh, for an end note. Um, and that's not something that necessarily works well in an audiobook. My, my, my interaction with the text is very different um, in a physical form than what it could ever be in an audiobook. So that's a, that's a major reason I don't just use them in general. Uh, but the other one is that I really enjoy listening to music. Like I thoroughly love listening to music. And if there's lyrics singing along with music, so do our daughters. Uh, so most of the time, if I'm driving in a car, uh, I'll be listening to music. Periodically, I might listen to a podcast or a booktube video, um, or you know, maybe while I'm cooking or something, but generally it's going to be music. So uh, I have no issue with audiobooks. It's just not something that works well with the way I like to read. Prompt two, do you utilize your local library? Yes. And so do our daughters. They absolutely love it. Our older daughter, now that she can read, she'll walk in and, and sort of read. She'll be like, hot fiction. She'll be like, ooh, I might be interested in that. Of course, you know, it's like the new releases that have been checked out repeatedly and things like that. But um, we, we love the library. And we are fortunate that living in downtown Phoenix, we have access to a great library there. Um, really wonderful space. And so lots of wonderful books. So I, my wife and I generally use it to, you know, get a hold of new releases so that we don't have to pay $38 for the new release to read it. Uh, prompt three, do you DNF books? Absolutely. Uh, life's too short to, you know, waste your time reading bad books. Read, read something that's going to engage our minds and, you know, make, make us think, make us empathize, uh, help us just appreciate the human experience. That's what I want from the books I'm reading, whether they're fiction or nonfiction, poetry, dramatic works. I want to engage some part of the human experience. And so if I'm just not feeling something, I'm not going to like trudge forward through it. That's not something I choose to do here in my mid thirties. Um, but again, I know there are some people who feel like they absolutely have to know the ending. And there are others who realize that they can flip to the end or nowadays, you know, just use Wikipedia. Uh, <laughs> but prompt four, do you read multiple books at the same time? Absolutely, yes. Sometimes it's because I, uh, often it's because I want sort of a different experience in my mind or in my sort of heart space uh, with, with, with what I'm engaging. And there'll be some side of it that, that I, some side of myself that I want to engage in, in a different way. Um, so I might be reading something from nonfiction. I might read, excuse me, a short story or a, a genre work, or I might be reading a really long work. I've said multiple times that I think, uh, particularly when reading those really, really long works from the 19th century um, or prior <coughs> that were serialized at one point, those works weren't necessarily meant to be read in one week. They weren't originally read in one week. They weren't written to be read in one week. They were written to be engaged with over time and to, to make it a sort of experience that one returns to and, and to see development uh, as our own lives are going on. Uh, and I enjoy that with longer works, so I'll take my time with them. Uh, right now, though, I'm reading uh, Kaikia with my wife, and we're finishing it up, and we're both enjoying it quite a bit. I highly recommend this book. I'll do a video on it later when we finish. Uh, prompt five, do you make time, have a specific time in your day devoted to reading? I work full time. Uh, and right now with the house remodel and stuff, it, it's a bit of a commute to get our daughters to school and then myself to school and then pick everybody up at the end of the day and come back home and maybe do some exercise. So my reading pretty much exclusively occurs at night during the week. Uh, I'll take roughly an hour to just spend some time reading once I've got our girls to bed. Sometimes I'll read with them or we'll kind of sit there, you know, with the lights low and have our reading lamps going and just sit reading together, which has really been fun to start doing uh, across this summer. Uh, but I read at night and then on the weekends, I read a little bit more if I have some spare time and I don't always. Prompt six, do you dog ear books? Not often. 
<laughs> I'll just say not often, uh, I, but not never as well. Problem seven, do you annotate books? No, so what I do is generally I can remember the page number I want to copy a specific passage from. Uh, when I do like the, the readings, if I'm doing a uh, discussion or a review of a book, I will try to remember the page numbers and I'll write those down and then I'll put bookmarks in those for uh, when I wanna pull the readings. Or if it's something I wanna like um, memorialize, I have my uh, sort of commonplace book, my journal, and I'll copy out passages or sentences um, or, or lines from a poem or, or play uh, in that, just having noted what the page number was as I was reading earlier. I don't write in the books um, and I don't highlight in the books. Sometimes I might use a pencil to sort of make an indentation and then erase that. Uh, finally, prompt eight. How do you feel about spoilers? Well, it depends on the work. There was a great uh, tag gosh, a year ago, maybe it was even two years ago, if I, if I am misremembering, uh, that was called like the, the spoilers tag. And I, there, there were interesting ways around like, why is a person reading the book? Well, if it's a thriller where the plot is very important, then perhaps the spoiler would affect one's enjoyment of the novel. That said, some of my favorite thrillers, some of my favorite crime novels, and I really enjoy reading crime fiction, uh, I can go reread having read it a year or two years or three years or 10 years earlier, knowing the plot, knowing the beats of the plot, but I can go back and reread it and enjoy it uh, because of the writing or because of the sensibility the, um, and, and, and the, the sort of feeling it's creating. I can enjoy that um, despite knowing, you know, the twist. Um, there are, of course, the books where this, once you know the spoiler, you can appreciate how that twist is introduced earlier in the work. Something like The Murder of Roger Ackroyd by Agatha Christie comes to mind, where once you know what the famous twist is within that book, rereading it, you can appreciate the little clues and hints that Agatha Christie has laid earlier in the book before that twist is revealed towards the end. Um, and so, so there are ways in which spoilers uh, perhaps give us a new flavor or, or experience with the work. Um, but I generally try not to spoil works. I generally try um, because some people really appreciate, you know, that plot. I do. I certainly will if, if there's a film adaptation and I haven't read the book or, or, or seen the film. I generally watch the film first because I find that the plot feels a little more integral there than it would in a book where I can appreciate the writing in, just in a different way. Um, so yeah, I, I don't try to engage in them. Certainly my wife and I will say, look, are you planning to read this? If not, oh, here's what happened. Let me fully discuss it and share it. Or, you know, you might choose to read this right now. She's reading The Adventures of China Iron. I haven't told her everything about that. Um, we're just discussing as she is, uh, you know, with, based on where she's up to in that, in the reading of that. But again, that's not necessarily a book that would be spoiled. It's just that I don't want to diminish anyone's experience. I once spoiled Lonesome Dove for someone in college uh, and they were roughly 75% of the way through the book and a major character death was about to occur. I thought it had already occurred. They just happened to say something and that ruined that person's experience. Um, and I had to dodge a copy of Lonesome Dove. So I, you know, since then, try not to. But I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. And I'll try to link uh, my responses to that spoiler tag because there that was a really great set of prompts as well. So I hope everybody's having a great week, a safe week, uh, a cool week, hopefully, as we get milder weather. Have a good one. Thank you.